So we were, came back from the prayer meeting with, right, with uh, some pastors, and we went to bed like any other normal night. And sometime between maybe midnight and three in the morning, I don't know what time, but that's when I went to sleep, so it had to happen somewhere between there. Uh, I, all of a sudden, was just dropped into a cell. I felt myself dropped and hit the floor in a prison cell. I didn't know how I got there. I didn't know anything. The Lord didn't explain anything to me until the return. All I knew, I was I just appeared in this cell, I hit the floor, in this, and it was uh, stone walls. I could see the stone walls. It was rough cut stone, not all smooth and nice. And there were bars on the doors, just like you would imagine a prison cell. And I thought, where am I? And I knew I was me. I looked just like me. I had a body. And in Matthew 10, 28, it says, Fear him which is able to cast the soul and the body into hell. So you do have a body. And it looks like you do now. And uh, I looked at myself, and I was laying on the floor. And the first thing I noticed was I didn't have any strength in my body at all. No strength. I, it was as if I didn't have any muscle. I could hardly move. And I thought, what is wrong with my body? I noticed that right away because my wife and I like to work out and eat right and take care of ourselves. So that bothered me that there was no strength at all. And uh, it was terrible. And I looked and I saw these two huge creatures. I didn't know what they were because I went there as an unsaved person. The Lord kept it from my mind that I was a Christian somehow. He just kept it out of my mind. I, don't, I didn't understand it then, but he explained it on the way back and I'll get to that. But I was there as someone unsaved. I didn't know what they were. They were huge, enormous, ugly, terrifying creatures. Uh, worse than anything you can really describe. But to try to describe them, one we'll see in a video that we'll show you. That's a pretty accurate uh, description, but they were um, very reptilish. One was real scales and bumps all over its body. It was about 12 or 13 feet tall. And enormous. It was out of proportion. Its feet were real big, and it had this huge head with um, a protruding jaw with big teeth and eyes sunken way back in its sockets, big eyes, and like slime dripping from its mouth. It was a gross, horrible-looking thing, and they were cursing God. I, I didn't, couldn't understand totally what they were saying, but they were just blaspheming God, cursing God, and they had such a hatred in them for God is what I felt and heard. And I thought, well, what are these creatures? I didn't know there were demons yet. I didn't realize. I didn't realize exactly where I was yet. And, but then I noticed uh, also the heat. It was incredibly hot in this cell. Uh, just beyond anything, I knew this heat, I should be dead. Why am I alive living through this heat? But I didn't die. And that amazed me that I could live through it. This one demon grabbed me and picked me up and threw me into the wall like I was a glass, that light. Just the strength of the demons, I also knew that they had a thousand times the strength of a man. So even if I had strength, you couldn't fight them off. But you didn't even have the pleasure of trying to fight them off because you didn't have any strength. So it's awful when you feel like you can't even fight back. And it threw me in the wall and I felt every bone in my body break. And I thought again, well, I'm dead now for sure. And I felt the pain. I do believe the Lord masked the pain. I didn't feel all of it, but I did feel the pain enough to where I was screaming and begging for mercy from these creatures. And the more I begged, the more they enjoyed. They wanted to do more tortures. And the other one grabbed me. The other one was real, had like razor sharp dorsal fins or something all over its body, its limbs. And again, its limbs and everything was out of proportion and about 12 or 13 feet tall, huge. And just grabbed me with its claws and just tore my flesh right off, ripped it right off. And I looked and I thought, oh my gosh, my flesh, it's gone. And the, there was no blood and no water. I noticed right away, it was just dry flesh. And about, maybe it seemed like 30 seconds later, the flesh started coming back on. It just came back and I looked like, what is this? Its flesh is growing back. And it came on so they grabbed it and ripped me up the flesh off again. And I knew, I thought, they can do this forever. Forever they can do this to me. And, and you wanted to die right then. The pain was terrible, and I was begging for mercy. But they don't have any mercy. There is absolutely no mercy with these creatures. They talked amongst themselves about what they were going to do next to me. And the one grabbed my arm and just yanked it right off, pulled it off. And I'm screaming, and I'm so upset, too, because, you know, you're thinking all the thoughts. You have your full memory in hell. 
and I'm thinking how hard we worked in life to take care of ourselves and eat right and work out and just take care of yourself. And these creatures had absolutely no respect for the body at all. And they just destroyed it. There's a scripture that talks about that you'll go down into everlasting destruction. They're constantly destroying the body because they hate it. And I didn't understand why they hated me with such an intense hatred. I thought, what have I done to these things? I haven't done anything. And, but they hated me with a hatred like you, can, you can't get on earth. You know, you've heard of men that hate and kill and do horrible things, but nothing like this. These creatures hate you intensely. And I, was, I, I noticed how I was so thirsty. I wanted a drop of water, just one drop. And there wasn't any water. I noticed there was no water anywhere. Uh, there was no, the atmosphere, the air is so dry because there's no humidity. There's no water in hell. So you're, you're so thirsty. Just one drop of water would be so wonderful to have, but you don't get it. There actually were four demons in the cell, but I didn't see the other two. I knew there were four and that they were assigned to me to torture and torment me forever. For as long as you're in hell, they would be there to torture you. They were assigned. And then I was in a holding cell of some kind. I wasn't in the permanent place that I would be, but just this temporary place. And I, I just didn't see the other two. It, was, it, it got dark after about 30 seconds. That's all it was light for. And then the light went out. It was as if the Lord left. So, but he was there long enough for me to see the sight. So when it went dark, it was so dark. And, and it was a darkness like you can't even imagine. And there's a scripture in uh, Exodus 10.21. says that when the plagues on Israel, uh, Egypt, says that darkness which may be felt sense. And it was actually, it's hard to describe a darkness like this, but it's so eerie and heavy. And that's what I thought, oh, I can't even see. So I got out, and, and then there was, looking this direction, there was light enough to see the skyline, only because uh, 10 miles away from me was this pit of fire. Huge pit, and it was three miles across this pit, 10 miles away, and it was raging, just raging flames, hundreds of feet in the air. So it lit up the skyline enough to be able to see and I looked, and that's when I really realized, I'm in hell. I'm in hell. And I looked around, and it was all brown, dead, desolate. Nothing of any life, of any kind. Not a green leaf, not a green blade of grass. Nothing alive. I thought, this is just stone, dead, and the air was filled with smoke. Horrible, putrid, ugly, way worse than L.A. smog that you heard about. It was terrible. And the thirst, though, I was so thirsty. And you can't breathe. There's not enough air in hell. You just can't breathe. And so the whole time, I, I, I'll try to, this is how you were in hell. I was like this going. <coughs> <coughs> just like that, trying to get one breath, but you don't get to the privilege of getting a breath of air to breathe. So you're tormented with that. And the air smells so bad anyway, you don't want to breathe it. The, the smell of the demons is so putrid and foul, like the scripture says that Jesus cast out the foul spirits. Yeah. That foul says um, that foul means putrid, rotten, disgusting. It's way worse than anything you've ever smelled on earth, uh, any open sewer or anything like that. Just imagine, take that times a thousand and put it up to your nose and just breathe that. And it was mixed with the smell of brimstone and sulfur like a sulfur smell, horrible sulfur, and also burning flesh. I knew, I've never smelled burning flesh, but I knew that that's what it was, burning flesh. Horrible, gross smell. So you didn't want to breathe anyway, but yet you couldn't get enough air. So you're denied all that. And the, the screams, it was so loud in hell because there was millions of people there, and I knew there was millions in other cells and in pits of fire and over in that lake of fire. And they were all screaming at the top of their lungs. So if you've ever been around a screaming person, just one, it's like, it grates you, you know, to hear screams. Well, just take a times millions. It's so loud, deafening, you want to cover your ears and you, you want to get away from it, but you can't get away from it. So you get no peace of mind. You're, you're just tormented with that. You want to get away from this noise and be at peace, but you don't get to enjoy that. Like we like to go home at night and be yeah. quiet and be, you don't, you don't get that privilege. I also, I wanted to talk to a human being where are we? What is going on? But you don't get that privilege either. You don't get to commune with any people. You're denied that. You're, they're kept away from you. So you, you only have the interaction of the demons. 
You don't get the privilege of talking to a human like we get together in fellowship and how nice it is to fellowship with people. We like to do that. You, you're, you can't do that either. And uh, you also are exhausted. I was like, if you've ever stayed up for nights studying for something or you had to work a lot and you're just completely gone, if you ever felt that way, we'll take that again times a thousand. You're totally exhausted, but you need to sleep just like you would here. And you don't get to ever sleep. So that alone, you should just die from that. All these things should kill you. The fear that comes over you in this place is so overwhelming because here, you know, God's presence is on the earth. And even if you're in a scary situation, God's presence is here. There, there's no, God's presence isn't there. And it says perfect love casts out fear. There's no love in hell at all. So the fear totally dominates the place. And you're petrified, terrified, traumatized, everything at once because you know that you're subject to these demons and you're, you're going to undergo all this torture and torment. They drug me back into the cell and did other gross tortures, which I always, I don't even like to talk about. Uh, just every imaginable gross thing you can even dream of, they would do to you. And they enjoy it. It was as if they had, um, uh, I don't know if pleasure is the right word, but they got, they were just, they were fulfilling something in them. They enjoyed hurting you. And um, I wanted desperately to get out of the cell. And about this time, uh, they put me down on the floor and eat one, each of them grabbed an arm and a leg and was going to rip my legs and arms off. And I was just bracing for this. And right then, something grabbed me out of the cell. And I was placed over next to the fire. Not in it, but maybe a couple hundred feet away from it, but near that huge inferno of fire. And I knew my wife was up on the earth, sleeping. And that this was the part that really bothered me a lot. I could never get to her again, ever. I knew that I would never get out of this place. And it's, it's like here you can't quite grasp eternity. You can't get a hold of it. It's like forever, what is that? Well, in hell you totally grasp eternity. You understand it. You can feel it. You know it. And you know you're there and you will never, ever get out of this place. That's the feeling, okay? Never. And I knew that I could never get to my wife. And that alone, that thought bothered me a lot because, you know, I just said this to her before, but uh, if anything ever happened in California, if we were ever separated and there was an earthquake or something, I told her, I'll find a way to get to you. I'll get there. I don't care what it takes, I'll get to you. And I couldn't get to her. I just couldn't get to her. I, I could never see her again. And it bothered me so much to have to feel that. And I thought, she'll not, she doesn't even know where I'm at. She doesn't even know I'm here. How am I going to ever tell her? For eternity? It, it's just that you can't even live with that thought alone just to be there forever. You're naked in hell, too. That's just another shame thing, you know. Just the whole, you don't have any clothes. And the humbling thing is, you know, God made us, as human beings, the best creatures that he's designed as humans. He's made us the top of creation. And in hell, these demons have become the lowest form of life that there is. And they rule over you. It's so humiliating to have these creatures run your life. And you think, you know, you study all your life, you go to school, you prepare yourself, you try to better yourself in every way. And then these creatures that... They had a zero IQ, okay? That's what I felt. They had a zero IQ. All they knew was torture and hatred. That's all. There, there wasn't any mercy. They don't know anything about that. And I thought, these ignorant creatures are going to run my life? Uh, to live with that alone is horrible. And it says in Isaiah 5.14, Therefore hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure, and the mighty man shall be humbled. So I don't care how strong you are as a guy and think you're macho or something. Uh, you're nothing in hell. You're hopelessly lost forever. I knew there were different levels of torments and levels of uh, tortures. That there were people in worse places than I was in. And there's a lot of scriptures on that being um, uh, in different levels. Jesus said that uh, ye shall receive the greater damnation 
and you shall go to the lowest hell. There's a lot of scriptures that Sodom and Gomorrah, that it would be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city that Jesus was talking to. So it's more tolerable. In other words, it would be less degree of severity of punishment for Sodom and Gomorrah. So there are different levels and people in worse positions. But any of the positions are awful. Anywhere. The whole place is horrible. I, it's just, a, you know, here we enjoy all the nice things. We get to uh, breathe the fresh air and the sunshine and all the things we take for granted. And many people, they don't want to have anything to do with God. But they enjoy all these nice things. They don't realize that if you take God out of the situation, remove God, the good goes with him. See, all good things, and James 1.17 says, every good and perfect gift comes from above. So when you remove God, the good gifts go with him. And hell is, there's no presence of the Lord there at all. So everything we enjoy here, sleep and, and uh, quietness and uh, fellowship and food and comfort, temperature, all of Everything, you don't have any of that there. You're completely denied all those things, and you have to put up with it forever. I mean, there's no way out of this place. And, I mean, that's just hard to imagine. <coughs> About this time, when I was standing alongside the tunnel, uh, I was below this uh, cavern, like a round cave cavern type thing. And I looked up, and it, was, it got dark, pitch black. But down here it was lit enough because of the fire. I was next to this fire, flames. And I could hear all the millions of people screaming in the fire, begging to get out. And I knew they were going to drag me in there too. And I didn't want to go in there. That's, that would be worse. To, that was already hot enough. But in there, to be burned and to continu continually burn, you know, to feel all that, I didn't want to go through that. But all around this, um, the walls of this cavern, were all kinds of demons. Every shape and size of demon were like, and I looked around and it was as if they were chained to the walls. I didn't see the chains, but I felt they were attached or chained to the walls, which didn't make sense, but there are scriptures on that too. But uh, they were all different sizes and shapes. There were, again, big ones like 12 and 13 feet. There were uh, ones the size of bears. There were giant rats, everything you hate. Giant rats, like as big as dogs, rats. There were spiders, huge spiders. There were small ones, and there were huge ones, like as big as this, like here. Just huge spiders. And thousands of them. They were everywhere, all over this place. And they all had one thing in common. They hated man. I knew they hated. They had a, enough knowledge to know that they hated man, and they wanted to torment us. You know, all of them. And fortunately, they didn't get to me. They were all there, and I was looking at them. There were snakes of all sizes and shapes. Gross, horrible snakes, big ones. There were snakes. There was one snake, and I, I don't even tell this because people think it's too crazy, but there was a snake that came from around the corner, and it was as big as a train, as big as a train car. I looked at that, and I thought, I mean, just horrible things like this, all kinds of gross demons of all sizes and shapes. And as I looked at them, something began to pull me up. And I started rising up in this tunnel. And I didn't know what it was, but I was starting to move. And I, I just wanted to get out of here, but I knew I would never get out. And that I thought, who could fight these demons? They're so powerful and so big. No one could fight them. That's what's in your mind. No one could fight them off. And the fear, again, I'm totally traumatized and looking at all this and going up this tunnel. And about halfway up, it's pitch black, and I'm terrified. And all of a sudden, this bright light shows up. Yeah. Glory to God. As soon as it showed up, it was so bright, you didn't have any question about who it was. None. None. Instantly, I fell on my knees. It's the only thing you could do. And right then, the Lord put it back in my mind that I was a Christian. Hallelujah. Glory. To go from the mind of total fear and trembling and that to instant save. I'm telling you, it was nothing like it to feel because the only ticket out of this place was Jesus. That was the only way. And you knew that clearly. There is no hope for them. You'll never get out. Only you have to know Jesus. I was so grateful I knew Jesus. I just fell at his feet and weeped. And you know, we sung about his holiness. And I tell you, when you're in his presence, you, know, you, you can't even describe how holy he is and, and how much he loves people. He loves us so much. And 
for him to see us people, his creation, go there. It's like, try to imagine your children, one of your kids, going to this place forever. You can't imagine, right? You can't imagine how sad you'd be that your kid would be there. Well, he has so much more love for us than we have for our own family and own kids. And I just, I, I just fell at his feet. I didn't want him to leave. I just wanted to worship him. And in Revelations 1, 6, it says, and, and, it, and his countenance was as the sun that shineth in his strength, John says. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as a dead man. That's how I fell. You just didn't want to move. You just fell. You didn't even feel like you had the right even to ask him anything. I mean, it, even though we do, you felt he's so holy. This is the God of creation. I just want to worship him. I just want to worship him. I'm so grateful. I just thank you, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. And I did, I don't think I verbally asked him anything. I thought things, and he just answered my thoughts. And I thought, Jesus, why did you send me to this place? And he answered me immediately, and he said, because people do not believe this place exists. They do not believe it's real. He said, even some of my own people don't believe this place is real. And that startled me. Like, even Christians don't believe it? Where do they believe they're saved from? But yet people, we have met people that don't believe that hell is a literal burning place. And he said, I want you to go tell them. Tell them this place is real. Tell them. And my thought right then was, it popped in my head for a second. Uh, but who's going to believe me? You know, they're going to think I'm crazy or had a bad dream. And that's what came into my mind. But instantly he answered my thought. And he said, it's not your job to convict their hearts. It's the Holy Spirit. He said, it's your job to just tell them. Tell them. I'll convict their hearts. Well, right away, instantly, it was like, yes, sir. I, I, you didn't want to even... It was, oh, yeah. You're right. You're right. It's, that's the Holy Spirit's job. So that thought leaves when you're in his presence. You just, there's a boldness like, I've got to tell them. I've got to tell them. I, ha I have the answer. These people are going there unless we go out and tell them. And I, I said, Lord, why did you pick me? Why did you have me go here? But he didn't answer me. He didn't tell me. He didn't give me an answer. Why? And I didn't want to bug him about it. <laughs> I just wanted to worship him and, and not have him go away. It's like, don't leave. Don't ever leave. Please don't leave. And also, look... I couldn't see him physically. I could just see a bright light and an outline of a man, the shape of a man. Because it's so bright, you can't really see him. And I just looked in this bright light, so bright and white light, different than light we see. You know when you see these cars that have the headlights that are the new laser headlights and it's more white? Well, it's, you've got to go that direction. It's so white and pure and holy. It's like you, all of a sudden, the holiness of God just permeates every part of you and it's just so exciting to be with him uh, you I picked up on his power his awesome power it's the Bible talks about he has infinite power and you realize it when you're with him he is in control <laughs> you know we think the devil runs the devil he doesn't run anything God is in control of this place but yet his awesome love the love he has for people is so overwhelming you're just flooded with it and you can't even stand it you're just weeping because you feel the love he has for mankind and he said I don't want anybody to go to this place not one person do I want to go to this place but he said you've got to go and tell them he said because I am coming very very soon Praise God. And he said it real strong like that and then again he said it about a minute later he said tell them I am coming because he said, I am coming very, very soon. And I took it like it was soon. You know, I, I should have asked. I wish I would have asked. Like now you want to say, well, what's soon is soon? Do you, you know, 10 years, 20? <laughs> now you think that, but when you're with him, you don't think that way. You just, you, you, it's, you're too, too respectful. But I took inside that he meant it was soon. It's, it's not long from now. Amen. It's not long. We're his mouthpiece. And here we keep our mouth shut. And he, he also said, he said, my people find excuses not to witness. He said they back off and give up too easy. But when you're with him, it's so urgent. Do you feel this urgency? You've got to go tell the world because they're going to this place. And we came up on California, came up on my home. 
And I looked and saw, there's my house. And, and as we came closer to it, I could see right through the roof. And I saw myself laying on the floor in the living room. And as we came up to the body, my body, and uh, something sucked me back in, like a suction, pulled me back in through my mouth or nose, I'm not sure which. And when I came back in, then the Lord left right then. When he was there, all those demons, everything in the tunnel, they all looked like ants. They were like nothing. And the power of God and the was perfect love cast out fear, I was totally at peace. But when he left now, all of a sudden the fear and the terror came back in my mind. It's like that section being with him was taken away for a minute and uh, the fear came back in. So I just came to screaming and terrified and screaming. And I was totally in trauma. I didn't even know I was back. And then that woke up my wife. Mm -hmm.